360. Yeah. When you gain altitude, it's only 130. Will that help? He's down the path. Bad boy. See our guys? He's down the path. Alright, right now he's all the way at the end of the path on the left, right where it forks. I'm going to rotate. Yes. Yeah, fly like right over the water. You can go forward a little bit, Phil. Or where Forks, he's on the left, laying down by the uh, bush. No issues. Officer safety was all set. We got the thumbs up from our officers on the ground. We were like maybe 10 or 15 feet from him, and we had no idea he was there. I think the general public, when you tell them you have a drone program, like I told some of my neighbors, um, they expected like a Predator drone that were flying around eight hours at a time, just kind of surveilling the entire town of Colony, maybe similar to the LAPD helicopters that are up all the time. Today we're going to take you through uh, some of our scenarios that we train for and that we've used uh, on missions that we've been called out for. That's going to show you the uses of our, our drones here in the town of Colony and how we use it to more efficiently complete our job. We have an opening forward, and it opens to your right once you get in there. Yep, I got it. So we're going in, we're clearing this room. Sure there's nobody in there. Moving up. Right. And you got a clear room ahead of you. Looks like there's an opening. So we're going to move forward to that room. Moving up. Hang on, stay right there. I'm looking at Phil's. So we got a hallway there. And we have back. As far as suspect room. searches, there's no doubt that it's safer to deploy a drone than to put people in. If we um, have encounter an individual in a house who wants to harm himself or others, we will call out our special services team. We do have a uh, avatar robot that we use, but we cannot use that every time during deployment because it has its limitations. So at that point, we bring the drones in. You can put a drone in and search most of the house where it has access to, and locate a person and de determine if they're armed or if they're a threat. Clear. It's almost like a chain reaction. We, we do a train through the house. So we keep the drone ahead of us. We bring operators in behind that. We clear a room and then we move forward to the next room. We're able to clear the house and find the individual in the back. And once you locate them, you can give them commands from a safe distance. If they fail to comply with the commands, then you use other tactics. But if you just send officers in and initially encounter that person who may be armed at the time, there's gonna be less time to give them commands and react than if you are using a drone that would give you more time to communicate with them and allow them to, to uh, comply. So they have more time to actually comprehend what you're telling them and, and to follow through on the commands. So it makes it safer for both the suspect and officers as far as the end resolution with the drone. Pretty much a standard in New York State with all public safety right now has been DJI. Uh, just because of their technology with the video transmission is much clearer than the alternatives that we could have went through, as well as the prices is much more economical for us and, and law enforcement to use them. Weather obviously is a big issue. Some of these drones are, are not rated below certain temperatures. We purchased one that is. Ours should be operational all, all year round with, with weather, whether it's rain or cold or extreme heat. So once the selection process for the equipment and the authorization came through, we had to then go through a selection process for pilots and develop policy and procedures. We wanted to ensure that with a new program, especially in New York State, and we're not doing anything to violate any laws or regulations and infringe on anyone's privacy. So our policies were created before the program was up and running that limits us significantly in what we can do without a search warrant. I'm just want, I want to go up the whole rail so I can see what car might be off track or spilling hazardous materials. We're heading northbound on the rail yard. Okay. Zoom in a little more. Everything looks good there, nothing looks out of place. With chemical spills, uh, there are train cars that come through, through the area here and all over New York. Other chemical tanks that might spill or overflow or leak. Uh, in those situations, when you initially you don't know what's leaking. Traditionally, we would have to send people, and we send people in the harm's way. And without knowing immediately what's on the train, they're going to go in blind and not know really what's going on. We can identify the hazmat markings on the tanker, identify what it is, identify the best way to uh, mitigate the spill. We can quickly identify what we're dealing with without having to put people in harm's way first. The ability to do that is, no question, is much safer for everyone, it's safer for the public, just to uh, mitigate the spill in a, in a more effective and, and, and rapid manner. It's gonna uh, reduce the amount of damage to the environment and, and the public. So 
um, no question that's going to keep it safer for everybody. When coordinating a massive area search for a person, uh, number one, we can use the, the drones to live map the entire area and then deploy people accordingly based on live uh, up-to-date images of the terrain we're looking at instead of Google images, which may be outdated. Uh, so we get live images, we can deploy our officers more efficiently, and then we can coordinate our search and grid patterns based on those live images and uh, more, more effectively search an area and, and find people quicker. Uh, exterior, officers are searching behind homes and sheds for an armed suspect. If we can locate that person and zoom in and see what kind of weapons they have on them, and direct them to a safe location to give them commands and then follow them with the drone to see if they're complying. I mean, just using any, any type of application that allows officers to distance themselves and gives us more reaction time to respond to, to these threats is gonna be safer for everybody in play. And that really opens up uh, so many avenues for law enforcement just to get a, you know overall view of a, of a scene or to search an entire uh, you know, neighborhood real, very rapidly for a suspect or a missing person. It just makes sense. It really enhances our ability to do our job more effectively. Our pilots took online courses for the FAA remote pilot license, and they all got their license, their Part 107 license. And once they had their license, we began a 40-hour um, initial basic course here within the department. We drill uh, twice a month. We come out and do snares like this so we can keep our skills fresh and practice you know, best practices and techniques for the missions that we're called out for. It's been a process, it's definitely a continual process. We like to branch out to the experts in the nation and kind of uh, develop our program based on what they've been doing. Chicago has a unified uh, traffic unit. They've done over 400 drone reconstructions. Going over the, their flight techniques and, and cameras that they're using, how they're lighting the area is actually gonna improve our program greatly here. Uh, just learning from what they've done. We've reached out to some departments in Colorado that have been using thermal for searching for people. So really we've been reaching out to uh, law enforcement out west, kind of learning from people that have already been doing it and then making it work here in New York with our rules and regulations here. I mean, it's hard to reassure everyone, but the general public, um, we're not big brother out here looking for people. Our drones are not in the air 24-7. These are not military drones. Some of them are consumer drones you can buy at Target and Best Buy. Some are enterprise level, which uh, are a little more expensive, but anyone in the general, general public can own. We have taken the steps, to, our, our policy is in place we will not videotape anyone in a, in a private location without a search warrant. So if it's not on public property, we're not videotaping, we're not looking at it, we're not recording. It's really used to enhance our ability to do our job effectively and quickly. We're using it to find someone to save time, save lives, uh, live structure fires, missing people, armed suspects, and SWAT team call outs. Uh, anything beyond that we, we have used it for, we have uh, applied for and received search warrants to use it before we fly it. For the most part, I think as drones become more common in the, in the U.S. and as consumers purchase them, they understand what they are, what they're capable of, and what we're really using them as. They're basically photography tools. I mean, that's what DJI was made for. It's like aerial photography. And that's we're just using that to enhance our ability to, to do our job safer, keep our people safe, keep the public safe. And I think as the news starts to report on it more and it becomes uh, more commonly used in police departments, people will get to see that it's not really used for spying on them. It's, it's actually really being used for the right reasons, and that's why the policies are important, and uh, New York State in general is trying to develop policies for everyone's use that will you know, put the public at ease that we're not using this to spy in society. It's, it's for specific missions for trying to rescue people and save lives. That's, that's what the drones are for.